If you're watching this clip on the Cycling GK YouTube channel, the full football fill-in episode is now available to watch and listen to on Spotify. And it's also live on the Cycling GK YouTube channel on Tuesday at 10 a.m. I mentioned at the beginning of the show that England are favourites to win the Euros. Um, does that in itself bring a lot more added pressure? Because in my lifetime, same as yours, you're older than me, we've never been favourites going into a major tournament. No, I think um, you know you playing for England brings its own pressures. Working for England brings brings its own pressures. And you like to think going into any tournament that I were involved in uh, as a coach, right? We we're going to be good enough to win some. That, that that's the holy grail. That's what we all wanted um, to try and think we could win it. But we were never, I would say, anywhere near yeah. favourites for the tournament. I think with this group of players. Behind the scenes, they know that they're a good team at the moment. I don't think that's going to affect them in any way, shape or form because of the form we've had in the recent tournaments. This is Southgate's fourth major tournament with England. Yeah. I believe the team is now primed to win. Yeah. If we don't get beyond the semi-final, do you believe that this group of players and the manager will think that we've failed? Oh, not just. I, I, I don't think it would just be Southgate or the play, The whole country, mate. Honestly, if we go into a tournament, if we go into a tournament as favourites, anything other than winning that tournament, right? Yeah, anything other than winning that tournament will be seen as a failure. It is as simple as that. So if we're going in as favourites, anything, I'll promise you, this country, my God, we do not let you get away with anything. We do not let you get away with anything. So anything other than a win, a major tournament win, it will be a failure. It will be simple as that, and there'll be people calling for Gareth Southgate. Says we saw it the other night. We beat Malta two 0 in a. It's a dead rubber. It is genuinely a dead rubber. Can you imagine how hard it is trying to get players up for a game like this against Malta? Yes, yeah, so, so it's, let, it's impossible. Yeah. So let me let me finally flip it then onto um, Gareth, and I'm not here to to talk about what he's done and what he hasn't done because I think his time with England has been phenomenal. Yeah. To be honest with you, um, but do you think going into this tournament when you could talk about having top, top managers who are at the top of the English game because his contract finishes in December. Do you think he's too safe with his tactics for England to win this tournament? Oh, that's such a good question. I think the, the, the rhetoric, the sort of the way the public opinion is that Gareth Southgate's tactics, uh, tactics are too safe. I think that's what people think. But I think the way that we play and us, the way we set up, it, it lends itself to winning games. Yeah, and I think you can go, you can go a lot more aggressive, and you can go a lot more attacking if you wanted to. Gareth Southgate could, anybody could, with this England squad, easily do that. But that is not necessarily more conducive to winning games, if that makes sense. No, yeah, sure. do you know what I mean? You have to have, you have to have a, a solid foundation and a solid base, and then when you get the chance to give the ball to the good players, you go, go on then, and go and do something. And I think what because we have got an embarrassment of riches and talent and ability, I think they, they think, I, I think people think genuinely it's like playing football manager or championship manager or something like, it's like you, you fill your, play, your team with the best players and surely they just go and do it. No, it's, it's about tactics. It's about, it's about opportunities and reading the game and reading moments. And, um, and I think that's what Gareth Southgate's tactics do. And I'm actually fairly happy with the tactics and how cautious he is because it allows us to build with a solid platform, and then when we get the chance, boom, we go and go. So, so that's where I stand on it. Would a, would a Guardiola or would a Jurgen Klopp, for example, would they be able to get more out of this England squad? Wow, um, wow, I think possibly. I yeah, think well, possibly. but that, but that's going to be the, the the question, isn't it? Hopefully, we win this tournament, and Gareth will be able to walk away, and he's left a great legacy. But then. When you talk about what's next, is it Southgate's final tournament? What is next to replace him? Yeah. Surely, for the English FA, they have to try and get best in class. Yeah. And best in class at the minute, whether we like it or we don't, are the two managers at Man City and Liverpool. Yeah. And that is where they have to start. I would love it to be an Englishman. And the guy who's doing the best at the minute for me would be Eddie Howe at Newcastle. Yeah. But is that a sentimental feel? Because I feel as though we want we're the best Englishman, so I want to represent English coaches, English managers. Or are we saying no for England to be at the top of the tree in world and European football? We have to isolate it and we have to try our utmost to get one of these two guys. If you remember in 2007, 
Mourinho were probably seen as the best manager on the planet. Yeah. And the English FA really tried before Capello to try and get Mourinho. At that time, obviously, he weren't, he weren't interested in that. But I think post this tournament, we have to get whatever is seen as best in class. I, um, I think if we had Pep Guardiola as England manager, we would win tournaments. Who would play in goal for Pep Guardiola at the three goalies now? Fwah, golly, golly, Gumdra. He could, he could pick anybody. He could pick, I think he'd pick um, Steele at Brighton. Or Trafford. Or Burnley. Trafford, at Burnley, yeah, genuinely. It could be a, I, I, yeah, I, no, he no, would completely true. change it. He that, would completely change it. He, uh, have you right. seen the way Steele does it for, for Brighton, by the way? It is outrageous. Well, that's, that, that would be my feel. And I think that's where you talk about the tactics and the evolution of yeah. everything. So already we've spoke there. If there were a change, that he would change the the whole. He would. It outlet. would be completely changed. It would, and it would be. That's because that's the way he wants to play. That's the style of play that he wants to go with. And, I, God, that's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> that is a can of worms. If ever there was a can of worms. Can of worms, yeah. All right. So, so carrying on with with the England theme, then um, Gareth Southgate, his, his contract runs out in twenty twenty four. Assuming he doesn't win the tournament. Okay, assuming he doesn't, which we're all hoping he will. We all want him to win. We want England to win this Euros. Um, if he doesn't, first of all, do you think he's gone? Yeah, I, I think I think he'll he'll walk away. After okay, that. so we assume then that's that. The next favourites to be England manager at this moment in time, uh, we're talking the likes of Potter, Eddie Howe, even Jose Mourinho has been linked a little bit. Lee Carsley from the Twenty Ones. Yeah. Um, who would you see as a suitable replacement? For me, we, we we have touched on it. I think you have to look at the very, very top of class to yeah. get England to where we all want them to be, and that's winning tournaments. And obviously we're talking, we're not quite sure what's going to happen in the summer, but this is a, a phenomenal team at yeah. the minute with some unbelievable talent. And if it's just that last little bit to get us over the edge, I think we have to look at Klopp and Guardiola You've got to at least have a conversation with these guys because they've do, been at the top of the field for do you so reckon, long. Do you reckon they would do it on on a sort of part-time basis? Still manage Man City, still manage Liverpool, manage England. Would they want to do that? That seems like an excessive workload, right? I, I think that would be too much for these guys who are at the very top of the field. And ultimately, when you're in that position as well, you're going to get slight little conflicts of interest, aren't you? Yeah. You know, with the England players you've got with you or without you than when it comes to the squads. And I don't think you can manage the top, top teams and manage an international team yeah. part-time, if I'm honest with you. But do you know what? If that's the only way you can get a chink of light through the door really? to even get into these guys, it might be worth a conversation. I think to have either of those two guys at any point to manage England, I think we'd all be excited. Yeah, I do too. Because I think we think that could be the final piece of the jigsaw. Um, I think the the lead cars the ones a little bit on the heartstrings because Gareth's come through the same. Yeah, it's a sim- it's a similar story to Gareth Southgate, story, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's sort of inbred in him to know the England DNA, the England way, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but I agree with you. I think if we could get, and this is, I I feel really bad talking about it like this because Gareth Southgate is still our man, and I'm I'm really happy with Gareth Southgate. No, he's done unbelievable. Yeah. I I, I really am. I'm like you. Look, I I expect us to do well in the tournament. I think we've got certainly as good a chance as three or four of the other top teams, even though we are favourites. Um, and it'd be nice to have this conversation post the tournament and say, Gareth, you've won the Euros for England. You've done your time. He's done ten years. It'd be an incredible achievement. <laughs> 